Let's pray and we'll get started. God, we love you and we thank you once again for this incredible gift of a new day. Um, this is the day that you have made and with our lives, with our attitudes, uh, with our conversations, we will rejoice and be glad in it. And God, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity to start this day out. Looking at your word, we pray that you would enrich our lives and um, we love you and thank you for that in your strong name. Amen. Well, today is our last see you on, on Joseph. Um, so I hope you have enjoyed or gotten something out of, of this series. Uh, if not, don't tell me. It's okay. Um, but today I want to finish up uh, in Genesis 50. Um, with, I think, something that probably all of us need refresher courses in uh, at, at different times. I, I know that I do, um, but we're going to talk about uh, forgiveness. Um, and this, um, you would think as, as believers that this wouldn't be something that we, that we struggle with, and yet we do. I remember um, a few years ago, uh, 15 years into, into uh, pastoral ministry, um, I, I realized that I am harboring this unforgiveness and even sort of hatred towards my, my mother of all people. Um, and I get up and preach in a pulpit every single week and in, inside, uh, I had never, ever forgiven my mom and held this, this bitterness towards her for uh, her and my father's divorce and things that caused that divorce. And um, I realized I'm preaching this message of forgiveness, but I'm not really modeling it very well with my life. And I, I think I might have told this story, but one day I'm in the pulpit preaching and I, I and preaching on this subject of forgiveness, and I just felt the Spirit of God just prompt me and say, you need to call your mom and ask for her forgiveness. And, and I'm like, uh, I think I didn't hear that right, Lord. She needs to call me and ask for my forgiveness, right? Uh, but no, I, I had been harboring this unforgiveness towards her, um, and I had to call and repent and, and make things right to see that relationship restored. And um, I, I just think that any time we're dealing with interpersonal relationships, there's the potential for someone to wrong us or for us to wrong someone. And any time we are wronged or we wronged someone, there's the potential for us not to deal with it in a healthy and a biblical way. And any time we don't deal with it in a healthy and a biblical way, uh, it, can, it can cause uh, there to be bitterness in our heart. And if we let that bitterness go unchecked, man, it, it hangs on to us like an anchor in our, in our life. And, and we might not even realize it. We just walk around with this heaviness in life, and, and we don't even realize what it is, but it's, we're, we're pulling this anchor around of unforgiveness in our life. And I just pray that... Um, if you're dealing with that, that maybe the Lord just helps you a little bit. Maybe He prospers you, as we talked about, where He pushes you along in this area of your life uh, today or pushes you forward in this, in this idea of forgiveness if you're dealing with that today. Uh, so let's look at Genesis 50. Uh, and I want, I want you to remember as we read this that um, Joseph's brothers were going to kill him. Uh, they decided on plan B, which was selling him into what they thought and I'm sure he thought would be a lifetime of slavery. Um, so with all that in mind, let's read the true end of this story in Genesis 50. Uh, and ask yourself this question, could you forgive your family or friends for doing that to you? All right. Genesis 50, verse 15, When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, What if Joseph holds a grudge against us and pays us back for all the wrongs we did to him? So they sent word to Joseph, saying, Your father left these instructions before he died. This is what you are to say to Joseph. 
I ask you to forgive your brothers the sins and the wrongs they committed in treating you so badly. Now please forgive the sins of the servants of the God of your father when their message came to him, Joseph wept. His brothers then came and threw themselves down before him. We are your slaves, they said. But Joseph said to them, don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. So then don't be afraid. I will provide for you and your family. And he reassured them and spoke kindly to them. Now, the only way that Joseph could have truly spoken kindly to his brothers if he had already dealt with this issue in his heart, right? And so we know that that Joseph had already dealt with this issue. This is really the first time that forgiveness is ever mentioned in the Bible. Uh, and, and, And to forgive in this context means to absolve fully or to release from penalty. Um, and, and I believe that, that in this case and in every case of our lives where there's been interpersonal conflict or wrongs against another, that ultimate healing and restoration only comes through forgiveness. All right, so I just want to give you three words that deal with this idea of forgiveness um, in, the, in the story of Joseph, and I think... Uh, deal with the issues of forgiveness in our life. The first word is, is release. Release. And I want to reread uh, verse, verse 15 and, and 16. And I, I just want to see if you catch something here. Uh, don't worry if you don't. I'm going to, I'll catch it for you. All right. Um, and, and by the way, again, I, I've told you this a couple of times, but I want you to understand some of this that I'm going to share with you is my opinion. It's the way that I interpret this, this scripture as we, as we read it. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, What if Joseph holds a grudge against us and pays us back for all the wrongs we did to him? Um, now this is just a, just a, a, a personal personal opinion um, there's there's no record there's no record of what we're of what we're about to say or what or what we're about to read in the in in the Bible there's no record of Jacob actually saying these words to to his sons I believe that this was a lie I believe this was a fabrication they said after their father died they then, they then make up this story. What if Joseph says this? Their father's dead. What if Joseph says this? Let's, let's bring some words from our father Jacob to try to bring restoration in the story. I, I think they were making this thing up. So they sent word to Joseph saying, Your father left these instructions before he died. Remember, they came up with this story after he died. This is what you are to say to Joseph. I ask you to forgive your brothers the sins and the wrongs they committed in treating you so badly. Now please forgive the sins of the servants your God, uh, of, your, of the God of your father. And when their message came to him, Joseph, Joseph wept. His brothers then came and threw themselves down before him. We are your slaves, they said. Um, But Joseph said, don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Now, I want you to notice what didn't happen in this story. Joseph's brothers never asked for forgiveness. Right? They they came with a story that I, I believe they made up from their father saying that their father asked Joseph to forgive them. And then, of course, they throw themselves down at, at Joseph's mercy, but, but they never came to Joseph and said, Joseph, we really messed you over bad. We would really like to ask for your forgiveness, to beg for your forgiveness. We know that we were wrong, Joseph. They never did that. Uh, they came on behalf of their dead father with a story that may or may not have even, have even been true. Let me, let me ask you a question. Um, can you forgive someone 
who never even brings themselves to ask for your forgiveness, who perhaps lies and manipulates um, and doesn't even deserve your forgiveness. Because when we think about it, that's really where Joseph was at. His brothers really didn't deserve his forgiveness. His brothers even now are still trying to, in my opinion, lie and manipulate. All right? But, but we can tell Joseph had already dealt with this situation. Because it, it says, am I going to put myself in the place of God? Now listen, if you don't get anything else, get this. When we choose not to forgive, that's exactly what we're doing. We are putting ourselves in the place of God. When we choose not to forgive, we are putting ourselves in the place of God. And what a dangerous, dangerous place to be. Leviticus 19.18 says, Do not seek revenge or bear grudge against another among your people, but love your neighbor as your Self. Uh, revenge, revenge is to bring justice to an unjust situation. We don't have the power to do that. We do not have, have the power to do that um, because we are, we are not God, right? We, we are not just. Only, only the just could bring justice in, in, in a situation or could bring vengeance. You say, but, but we are just through Christ. No, there's a big difference between being justified and being just. Only God is just, right? So only God can truly bring vengeance. Only God, uh, only God can do this work. We're, we're not in the vengeance business, the repaying business. Uh, Romans 12, 19 through 21 says, Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, It is mine to avenge, and I will repay, says the Lord. Again, vengeance is to bring justice to an unjust situation. Uh, and the Bible tells us only God is just. Um, if we live our life with unforgiveness we will always, always be trying to vindicate ourselves. Um, and when we do this, we spend our lives trying to, trying to prove something to other people rather than trying to please someone, right? And, and that's not how God wants us to spend our lives. Now... I know you might say, as, as I did, this is what I used to, to say uh, against my mom. Um, she don't deserve my forgiveness. She was wrong. She don't deserve it. Maybe you've got a situation in your life right now where you would say, well, they, they don't deserve it. Well, of course they don't. We don't give forgiveness to people who didn't do anything. Like, I don't look at Jan and say, Jana, I forgive you for making such incredible cupcakes. I forgive you for that. All right? Uh, only someone who has done something wrong is in need of forgiveness. Right? Or we would say it this way in the world of church, only sinners need a Savior, right? That's why we are all in need of the work that Christ did for us. Um, of course they were wrong. That's the power of forgiveness. Um, don't let that hold you back from forgiving them. Uh, so we, we have to release. We have to truly release. And it's apparent in this story that Joseph did that not, not because of anything that his brother said to him, but he released this to God. He said, I'm not going to put myself in the place of God. And when we release these burdens from our life, we're saying, you know what? I'm not going to put myself in the place of God. Only God can forgive sins. And I am not going to put myself in that position. It's too heavy a weight and I am not equipped to carry it. The second thing we need to do is we need to receive. Matthew 6 says, uh, And forgive us our debts as... Now that, that word as, right, means in the same way, in the same way as we have also forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, you know it, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, 
your heavenly Father will also forgive you. I don't fully understand this. I mean, this is, this is hard to get our minds around, but, but listen to it. But if you do not forgive others of their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Wow, that's pretty heavy stuff. And that's a pretty uh, heavy warning against harboring unforgiveness in our hearts toward others, isn't it? Uh, but, but really, the only way we can truly forgive others is if we receive God's forgiveness um, in, our, in our lives. When, when, I was, when I was a kid, I was the baby in the family. Um, and, and I had two older brothers and an older sister. My older brothers, um, man, they, I, I think their mission in life is to just toughen you up, right? I mean, that's what older brothers do. They want to make sure that, that, they, that they, yeah, toughen you up. So one day they, um, they put me through the sissy test um, that one of them had learned at school and they wanted to share that wisdom with me and make sure I wasn't a sissy. And so the way they did this is, you know, they come to me first, the younger brother, are you a sissy? No, I'm not a sissy. We'll prove it. Oh, well, you know, I mean, they took my arm and held it down and they said, you can't scream, you can't say a word. And for 10 seconds, they took pencil erasers and erased them on my arm as hard as they could, just making these burns. I mean, it burned. How many of you ever had something like that? It hurts. All right? And so, man, inside, I'm trying not to scream. I'm trying not to scream. And then they're done, and I scream, right? I'm, oh, my goodness. I got these what felt like first-degree burns all over my arm. I mean, it hurts. Well, my dad sees me later in the day holding my arm, and he comes up, and he's like, what is going on? And, you know, and, and, and so he sees my arm. He's like, what happened? What happened? And um, finally, I, I cave. I tell him what happened. He calls my two brothers in. And, um, and, he, and he begins to give them the what for for doing that to my arm, for putting me through the sissy test, right? And, and, um, and so he's, he's standing there, and, and, and he just he says to me, all right, Jason, hit him. We had, we had a little bit of unique way of dealing with conflict in our family. <laughs> and, uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm standing there. He's like, hit him. Hit him. And my older brother, Sammy, says, come on, I deserve it. Hit me. Hit me. Again, unique way of dealing with conflict. Um, and so, of course, I had to hit my brothers, you know, and tried to hold back on them a little bit. I gave it to them. Uh, and... and Anyway, um, long story short, I mean, they, they did get me back for then hitting them after the sissy <laughs> test, which I knew was coming. Um, but anyway, there's really no point to that story, except I think many times in, in our lives that we sort of have a hit me mentality towards God. Um, we, we do things wrong. We do things wrong, and then it's like, okay, God hit me. Get me back, Lord. Even the odds, get, get me back. Had a flat tire on my motorbike coming to school today. Oh, praise God. I know it's because I didn't do my devotionals. God, just get me back. I'm good now. We're, we're good. That's really not a healthy mentality when it comes to God, right? We think that many times the bad things that happen to us are God getting us back for something. That's not how God, God works. All right, that's not how, how God works in, in our lives. Um, God is never going to try to get even with you. He got even with Jesus on the cross, right? Once and for all, He got even with our sins through Jesus. So we have to, in a healthy way, receive, uh, or, 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 or truly receive God's forgiveness in our life. And when we truly receive God's forgiveness in our life, I believe it's only then that we can truly give forgiveness to others in a, in a healthy way. I know we're short on time, so let me just give you this third one real quick. Uh, believe. Um, I just want to read you a couple of scriptures. Psalm 103.2. I'll let you read most of these by yourself. God bless you. That was awesome. Uh, Psalm 103. As far as the east is from the west, so far as God removed 
his transgressions or our transgressions from us. Isaiah 53, we all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned our own way and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity uh, of, of us all. If we really, really believe, and there's other scriptures here, please read those. If we really believe that Christ has done this for us freely and fully, uh, we have no trouble doing this, doing this for others. If we really believe this, uh, we will not put ourselves in the place, in the place of God. Um, if we hold on to bitterness, it only destroys us. As one person said, uh, not, not forgiving people or being bitter towards people is like drinking poison and thinking that it's going to kill another person or hurt another person, right? Uh, when we hold on to that, it only hurts us. So I challenge you today, uh, as you might go through a forgiveness test in your life uh, at some point, um, don't put yourself in the, in the place of God. Uh, all, deal with that, deal with that, get it under the blood, believe what God has done for you, uh, release that forgiveness to others, and I promise you, you will feel that weight that has been holding you down released from your life, and uh, man, life will just be so much better when we truly forgive. So let's, let's pray. God, we love you, we thank you uh, for just this time that we have together. We pray, Lord, that... Uh, you would, I pray you would help us all in this area um, of forgiveness. Let us, let us never put ourselves in the place of God uh, and carry unforgiveness or bitterness towards another, but let us follow your example, uh, Lord. And just as you forgave us, you said, to whom much is given, much is required. You have given us much forgiveness. Let us be extenders of your grace and give that kind of forgiveness and grace to others. Lord, we love you and we thank you for it in your name. Amen. Bless you guys. Have a great day.